Yeah. 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 Okay. So uh, the first thing we're going to start with is by talking about inflation. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and we'll go back and finish up our Great Depression stuff. And then we'll start with the Nazis. Um, because inflation is really one of the things that led to the rise of the Nazis. Okay. Wait, you haven't finished our Great Depression thing? No, we have like five more slides. Okay. So um, the first part, I just need you to listen. Okay. Um, you don't need to take notes on this, but this is really complicated. So I'm going to try to explain inflation for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So inflation. Let's say Miss Ballard decides to go to Mars on a cruise. Okay. It's very exciting. Um, and I go to Mars and um, I decide that I want to buy a Milky Way bar. I'm um, hi. Um, so I go into the, the Martian store and I take my dollar bill. Okay. And I say, hey, Martians, can I buy that Milky Way bar? Do you think they're going to let me buy a Milky Way bar with my dollar bill? No. Yes. No. no. Of no. course not. Because first of all, there's no Martians. And secondly, what is this really? Is this really mean anything to you if you're from Mars? No. 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 Okay. This is just a piece of paper. They don't care about this. Okay. Um, it's the same thing. If I go to Botswana and I want to buy this beautiful giraffe figurine, I can be like, hey, here is $5. They're going to say, we don't use $5 here. We use Botswana money. I could say, here's $20. And they're going to say, no giraffe for you. Because we don't use that money. This money has no value. Okay, this is a piece of paper. So what I want you to get the idea is of is that money only has the value we assign to it. Okay, so um, let's say back in the day, um, we had a bunch, before we had money, the only way we could trade is by trading what we had. So let's say I grow apples, okay? So all the apples I grow are what I'm going to use to pay for things. So let's say I have to buy Trixie's dinner, okay? I got to go buy her some milk bones. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to pay for that in apples. I need to buy this can of beans. I'm going to have to pay for that. And apples. I want to buy, let's see, that's all I have here. Uh, so anything I want to buy, I have to pay for an apple. So I'm going to have to carry a lot of apples around with me. I'm going to have to carry this big cart of apples. Um, can I go very far? Can I travel to different countries with my apples? Yes. No, I can't go and be like, hey, I want to buy an airline ticket with a bunch of apples. It's not going to work. Okay. Oh, yeah. I remember my parent or my um, sister and my dad went to London, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. They went to London and they, wait, I remember they came home with a bunch of coins. Right. And, and you can't that, that like here, right? What? You, can only, you can't spend yeah. coins there. It's only my how sister. We... Mm -hmm. So it's like she got some coins and then she, it's, she was like, she can go to the bank and get like real our kind of money. Yeah, you have to change it. You can't just go to Walmart and use that money. So let's say I have all these apples. It's going to be a problem, especially if it's winter, because my apples are going to go bad. So people had to figure out a way to use money except just trading for things. And I could have said apples. I could have said I was trading oranges. I could be trading um, pears. Okay, But we have to find cows. We have to find something else. So instead of lugging around my apples, People discovered they could take their apples or whatever, and they could get gold and paint for it. Okay. So with that gold, I could take my gold and I could use this gold to buy my dog treats. I could take my gold to buy my can of beans. Okay. Um, can you guys mute yourselves right now? Okay, it's a little bit hard for me to hear all you. I'm gonna mute you guys. Okay. Um, okay, so everybody understand the apple thing. Okay, so I'm gonna trade my gold, trade my apple for my gold. So I take my gold and I can use it to buy other stuff. The problem is though with my gold is that I have different pieces of gold, right? So I have to always weigh my gold. So somebody's gonna have to have a scale and they're gonna say, Well, this piece of gold is worth more than this piece of gold. So eventually what governments do is they start printing, not printing, they start making coins out of the gold. We're gonna pretend this is gold, 
okay? Um, they start making coins out of gold and they know, hey, if I have two of these coins, it's worth this much. I don't have to weigh it every time. So that's when we get the, like, the coin money. Um, so like when we look back in time, like the Romans and the Greeks and people like from really old societies would use coins as money. Um, the problem is if you have a bunch of these, okay, it's going to weigh a lot. So people don't want to be carrying around all of their money with just these. So what they do is they take their money to the bank and they store it in the bank and the bank, um, instead of having to go get your money out all the time, would write you like a receipt saying, Hey, Miss Ballard has 20 gold coins in the bank. And I could give that receipt to someone else to pay for something. Well, the problem with that is then I have all these receipts going all around the world and um, they all mean different amounts. So eventually the government is going to say, Miss Ballard, mm -hmm. um, are we supposed to be taking notes on this? No, you're just listening. Okay. Okay, so eventually the government is going to say, hey, instead of doing all these receipts, we're just going to make bills worth different amounts of money. So one bill we're going to say is worth one ounce of gold. So everybody knows that this is worth the same amount and I can spend it anywhere. I can use this dollar to buy my can of beans. Okay. I can use my dollar to buy my apple. I can use my dollar to buy my dog treats. Um, the problem is though, hang on, gotta look at my notes here. Okay, so what I can do with this dollar then is I could technically take my dollar to where all the gold is stored in the United States. And almost all of our country's gold is stored in Kentucky um, at Fort Knox. So technically I could take my dollar bill and say I want my gold in exchange for it, right? Um, the problem is though, let's say that the US government decides they want to pay back China for all the money we owe China. It's like billions of dollars, guys. Um, so the government says, okay, well, we owe the Chinese government several billion dollars. Well, why don't we just print more money? Because then we'll have more money and we can pay the Chinese. So the government pay says that $5 is now worth this rock of gold. Okay, so $5 now equals one rock of gold. So Miss Ballard goes to Beerbergs and she buys her can of beans. She wants to buy her can of beans, right? Well, I take my dollar bill and I go to Deerberg's and they're like, no, you can't buy this can of beans because a dollar no longer equals gold. Five dollars equals gold. So I said, but I really want my beans. It's black beans and it's almost Cinco de Mayo. I really want my beans. So I have to go to Mr. Roberts and say, Mr. Roberts, I need to go buy my beans and all of the prices for everything have gone up. They've gone up five times, Mr. Roberts. So Mr. Roberts, if you want me to keep working here, you're gonna have to pay me five times as much. Well, Mr. Roberts, he, he knows Ms. Ballard takes students on all these adventures. So he says, okay, Ms. Ballard, we'll pay you five times as much so you can buy your can of beans. So Mr. Roberts though, he's gotta find a way to pay all the teachers five times as much. So your parents are gonna have to pay five times more to send you to school. Well, your parents aren't going to want to pay that. So they're going to have to go to their bosses and say, hey, we need five times more money so we can send um, Peyton and Sydney and Lauren to school. So then your parents have to make more. So then their businesses have to make more. So eventually everything cost five times more than it did originally. And let's say another year goes by. So everything's five times more. Well, the federal government decides, hey, let's pay off some more loans to China. So the easiest way to do that is to print more money. So now $20 is equal to the gold rock. Well, Miss Ballard, she goes to Deerberg's to buy her can of beans for Cinco de Mayo that year. And she puts her $5 on the table and says, no, you need $20 now. So Miss Ballard has to go to Mr. Roberts and say, Mr. Roberts, I need four times more money. So Mr. Roberts has to give Miss Ballard a four times raise for $20. And then he says, hey, parents of Covenant Christian School, you have to pay four times more this year so that we can pay our teachers more. So then your parents are going to want to have to pay to get more money. So eventually everything is going to cost 20 times more 
than it did originally. Wait, um, I remember when you, I just remember this, like that question about like, why can't we just print out a lot of money? Mm -hmm. So eventually what happens is this increases, increases and increases. And this is a real piece of money, okay? This is 50, or sorry, $5 billion in Zimbabwe money. Okay, they had so much inflation that this is $5 billion. Like this is what they used to buy stuff because this is worth so little. Okay, so this is probably like a dollar bill. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. $5 billion. Okay. All right, questions on inflation. This is really complicated. So pretty much like you would, you would have to go get, wait, so if, I'm a little confused. Wait. So if you got money, mm -hmm. and then you could go with. Uh -huh. Okay. So, is it? I feel like there's like two ways to this. Like, yeah, there's, there's, there's multiple things that can cause inflation. So generally, what you have is a rise in prices, right? Mm -hmm. My beans raised in price. Oh, okay. okay. So. Unfortunately, though, the other part of it is my dollar's value goes down. So even though this is a piece of paper that says a dollar, I can buy less with my dollar. So the price of my goods goes up or my my dog. Treats, OK, but my dollar, unfortunately, the value goes down. So everybody has to make more money so they can buy what they originally did. did so you're even all over the world. Or was it just, did this happen all over the world or was it just in Missouri? I'm not Missouri, just in America. Oh, okay. Great question. Um, so uh, generally inflation is different in different countries. So okay. um, it's most countries have, about, I think, 3% inflation. Okay. So that means that what cost a dollar this year um, would cost a dollar and three cents next year. So it's not a lot. Okay. But mm -hmm. that's why your dollars are constantly getting raises and why... Um, like the, the value of gas goes up and down. Um, the problem is when we talk about Nazi Germany, before the Nazis came in, they were putting money like this, okay, like in Zimbabwe, um, where it was out of control. So as long as inflation is low, it's okay because we can just catch up with it. And that's why we have um, the value of things, the price of stuff changes every year. Um, the problem okay. is when it gets to like $5 billion. Woo, that's too much. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Uh, yeah, Miss Ballard. <laughs> um, is that like Zimbabwe money? Is that like now or then? Well, um, let's see. This was printed in 2008. That was oh, born. Born. Yeah, so this was printed 12 years ago. So this is money that was printed when but you were born. So um, Zimbabwe has really bad inflation. I don't know if it's quite as bad as it was a few years ago. And then um, the other place that we think about is uh, Germany after World War One. So is Germany doing okay now? Yes, because they uh, they have a, a currency that's much more stable. They're on the euro. So if you go to France, if you go to um, uh, the Czech, no, not the Czech Republic, France or Spain or Portugal or Italy, they're all on the same currency. So they all use what's called a euro to buy, buy things. Okay. All right. So keep this in the back of your mind because we're going to talk about this um, with Nazi Germany a little bit more. So do you guys have, um, so we're going to go back and finish up Great Depression from Thursday and then we're going to move straight into Nazi Germany. Okay. Mm -hmm. So hang on. So do you want us to get our paper from? Yeah, go ahead. So if you have your paper from before, you can just add to it. Okay. If you don't have your paper from before, just start a new page. So we ended up talking about, I think we stopped with the CCC. What? We're last two. We're talking about the CCC. Uh, I, I was like, Franklin. mine says TVA. So oh, TVA. Okay. Says, okay. The last one for me is Franklin Dillon. <laughs> oh, I think you're one behind, Rose. Ooh, okay. Okay, so last time we talked about the CCC, 
Oh, the stock about, market? Yeah, the stock market one. Uh, we talked about how all these guys, um, all these guys were in camps and they were building stuff in our national parks. And we talked about how they built the, the bridge at Bennett Springs. And we talked about the TVA. Audrey, I'm muting you. Yay. Okay. Um, so we talked about the TVA, um, and we said this is when they built a bunch of dams to make the um, electricity. So remember, guys, we're only writing the bold part. Okay. If you have a question, go ahead and unmute yourself. But otherwise, you said the blue okay. part. Uh, just the black bolded part. Okay. So we did the TVA last time. Okay. Another thing they did was the SEC. Miss Ballard, are you presenting? Yes. Can you not see? No. 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 That's a problem. You're just seeing my face. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Let me check. <laughs> Okay, let's try this again. How's that? There we go. Okay. Yeah, so we talked about the TVA. We talked about the SEC. No, we're going to talk about the SEC. So remember, the stock market crash was related to people buying and selling shares with stock really, really quickly. Okay. So um, because they were concerned about keeping the stock market stable and not going up and down, um, and dropping really quickly. They created what was called the Securities and Exchange Commission. Are um, we to write what's in bolded? Just bolded. Mm -hmm. okay. So the Securities and Exchange Commission monitors the stock market to make sure investors are doing what they're supposed to do. And it ensures there won't be another stock market crash. So even though the stock market was doing poorly the past couple of weeks, it won't ever crash like it did before. Who can mute your computer? Mute your computer. Thank you. Okay. Um, so a couple of weeks ago, uh, when the stock market was going really far down, they actually had the S team and shut down trading. They said no one can trade on the stock market until things calm down because they didn't want it to dive down. Um, so they're in charge of the stock market. Also, you might have heard that a couple of Congress people are in big trouble right now because they went and sold their stock when they knew that bad things were coming. And you're not allowed to do that. You have to. Um, it's called insider trading. You can only trade or sell your stocks if you're using the information everybody knows. So because Congress knows things before everyone else, some of the congressmen and women um, went and sold their stocks before they were supposed to. So that was a big thing. Miss Ballard. Uh huh. My dad said that the stock market went up 1,600 points yesterday. That's awesome. That's really good. Yeah, I think it went up quite a bit. I think it was like 7%, mm -hmm. um, which it's still down from where it was. It's at about, tw oh, wow, 23,000. That's really high. So it's, it's up today. Um, Let's see, my Amazon stock went up eleven dollars today, so it's a good day for the stock market. Miss Ballard, we only needed to write the secure, so the like the bolded part. Yep, like that's the bolded part. Yep, I just want you to know what some of these are. Uh, the AAA. This is the Agriculture Adjustment Act. Um, so we talked a little bit about how they had the Great Depression, or I'm sorry, the the Dust Bowl in New Mexico, um, and. Uh, this was uh, something passed to really help the farmers. It actually told farmers to plant less stuff so people would pay more for what they were planting. So instead of planting 10, 10 apple trees, they'd plant one. So then the value of the apples goes up because there's fewer apples. Um, so farmers actually made more money by planting less stuff. Um, also, it helped the soil have time to heal because there wasn't you're planting so much stuff, the soil lost all its nutrients. Can I move on? Mm -hmm. Great, WPA, uh, Works Progress Administration. So this is kind of like your unemployment agency and they would find jobs for people. So um, 
Uh, they paint, they had artists who were painting uh, murals for people. They had construction jobs. Some people got jobs sewing with the WPA. Uh, some people wrote books. Um, so it was just like a big unemployment agency to put people to work. Miss Ballard, how mm -hmm. do people keep track of all of the different, like, all of the different things, all of the different, like, all of them? How do they keep the track of them? There's just so uh, many. It was, it was really crazy. And I think um, it's kind of like now with how the government's trying to roll out stuff really quick. Um, my dad's trying to apply for a loan for his business. And every day, it's just the, the, um, the rules change. So I think um, there was a lot of uncertainty as well. That's a great question. I'm not sure. but Ms. Ballard, uh -huh. can you go back to AAA? -A -A? Yeah. Thank you. Uh-huh. Just the bird part, Peyton. Yeah, I know. Okay. Okay, you can change it now. Yep. Did you get WPA at Payton? Yes. Okay. All right, FDIC. This is the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. So um, let's say that, remember we talked about how the banks failed and all the people had all their money in them? Well, this is something to make sure the banks don't fail. So if I invest money today up to $250,000 in a bank, the government will promise me that I will get my money back even if the bank fails. So this encouraged people to put money in the banks again because all the banks closed. And we have to have banks to lend money so people can start businesses. Um, so this is something that's still really important today. So if you listen to a commercial about like a credit union or a bank, at the end of it, it might say FDIC insured, or it might be in the window of the bank. So you only want to invest in a bank that has an FDIC um, insurance uh, certainty. Ms. Ballard, how could they invest in the bank if they didn't have any money though? Some people still had money. That's a good question. Okay. Um, had money or they were slowly making money so this encouraged people to put or or they took the money out of the bank and this encouraged people to put money back in the bank okay good question <clears throat> all right also very important today the social security administration um so this case <laughs> the elderly and people with disabilities so the way this works is when miss ballard goes to school goes to school work um when i get my paycheck Every month, there's an amount that's pulled out um, that goes into the Social Security. And it's essentially like retirement money. So people who are older or people who can't work um, have a paycheck every month. So my great aunt gets Social Security, and she's been getting Social Security for 30 years now. Um, it's like retirement money that you pay into. Is this like the Social Security number thing? That's where the number comes from. Yeah, that's a good question. So you have a number that's tied to each person, and ultimately that um, goes back to the idea of getting a check from the government for Social Security when you're old. All right. Uh, just do the good part right here. Okay. A bank holiday. So because people kept withdrawing money from the banks, many banks were failing. So what the government did, Franklin Roosevelt closed all the banks for a week to calm people down. It was mass panic. And after that week, the banks reopened and people were less panicky. So people took less money out of the bank. You want money in the bank because the bank will lend your money to other people. So that way people can get a loan to start a new business and hire more people. So it's really important that we have banks. So they closed for a week? Not just one week. You're going to go to the bank for one week, and that gave time for uh, people to cool off. Because um, you might have noticed, like, people went out and bought a bunch of toilet paper a couple weeks ago. It's like that kind of panic that people are going and pulling all their money out of the bank. Okay. Everybody done with this one? Yeah. No. Not yet. No. Okay. No, okay. Yeah. All right. Can we do the bold black part? The that black part. Mm -hmm. Okay. The bold part. Yeah. Um, is is the coronavirus like starting to digress and digress or whatever it is in the United States? Oh, got it yesterday. Um, so that's a good question. They're not sure. They don't know what the 
the graph is yet, Sage. Um, they think that this is going to be the worst week for places like New York, where it's like a really big hot spot. Uh, but St. Louis, we're supposed to have our worst week actually in May. So we're a little behind. May. So. Does that mean we'll be in quarantine May? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. My, Wait, mom, but, my mom says like a slim chance that we're gonna go back. To school. Yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. I mean, guys, you just, you know just as well as I do what's going on. Like no one knows. So it's like we're getting better though. Because only fifteen people got it yesterday in St. Louis. Um, so we're really fortunate in St. Louis because we close things early, so we don't have it as bad here as they have it in Chicago and places like that. But isn't that bad? Because doesn't that mean it's gonna last longer? <clears throat> Say that again. Doesn't that mean isn't that bad because doesn't that mean that it's gonna just last longer here? But then they'll come up with um, a year. Well, there are less people infected to begin with here, so um, it it will last longer. But it's not because we have less infections. It's just like when it came here was later. Do you think so, it'll be better here though than other places? Yes, we're we're um. Right now, they said if everybody still does their social distancing and stuff, we're um, not going to run out of hospital beds, so we're doing okay. With it. But what if it's yeah. like, why? Why would they have come up with a cure by then? Because like, uh, let me get to then just a second. Okay, we need a new sheet of paper, and you're going to write this as your title: "The Rise of the Third Reich." Hitler. Uh, so really, they're working on a cure right now. Yeah. Um, they're doing a lot of vaccinations, uh, figuring out vaccines. They're working on um, uh, medicine for when you're already sick. But the vaccine, which will prevent it, won't be ready till next year. Oh, Miss Uh huh. Um, I finished the hiding thing. You finished it? Uh, oh my oh gosh. It was actually really good. I actually enjoyed it. Yeah. So it's really good. But, really like but the book is so it's long. It's, yeah, I think it's, it's not that long. I didn't think it was too long. All right. No, it's, it's, it's good. good. I like it. With you. Hey, I only got 15 more minutes. So I want to make sure I'm honoring your time. Okay. All right. Did everybody write this as the title? Uh, yes. Okay. So the rise of the Third Reich and Hitler. Okay. The Reich. Everybody say Reich. Do you write a different piece of paper? Yes, a different piece of paper. Okay. Um, so a Reich means empire in German. Okay. But so why is the third one? Uh, we'll talk about that. So I can answer that. Answer, how did and Hitler? How did Hitler come to power? I can't okay, remember. so you're just going to write the bolded blue part on this, okay? So Germany's problems after World War One. we've talked about this. Uh, so you're write, this is your left-hand side on the Cornell note, and this is your right-hand side. This is the most you have to write. Okay, so Germany had a ton of problems after World War One. Oh, gosh, go back. Okay. The most important thing is they have to pay all these war reparations to Britain and France. And we talked about war reparations is where you owe a lot of money. So they're essentially paying for the war. Um, this is a huge problem because Germany doesn't have any money either. So they somehow have to find a way to pay all of this money to the winners. Um, there are lots of people who are dead. There's lots of dead soldiers. Um, they also had the guilt clause. They shouldered the entire blame for World War One. So remember, they signed that they were responsible for all the bad killings, which is really something that died at the country. Wait, Miss Ballard, uh -huh. but in the thing, didn't mm -hmm. it like Germany was disarmed? What does that mean? Yes. Mm -hmm. That had to give up military oh. disarmament. Oh. Okay. Uh -huh. So like, think of arms, like, arms, like right to bear arms, like guns. <laughs> Yeah. So they have to give up their military. They can't have a military. Uh, they lost a bunch of land. They had a lot of African colonies that went to Britain and France. Also, all this land that's black uh, went to different countries. Um, and then there was very little food in Germany because there was a blockade um, that the British did so that Germany couldn't get any food from other countries, really. Wait, why are they being so mean to Germany? Uh, they're pretty mad at them for fighting a war against them. But why aren't they being mean to like Austria Hungary and Oh, that's a good Bulgaria. question. So um Austria Hungary was a pretty weak country compared to Germany. 
in Germany was a warmonger. What one was a warmonger? And after World War One, Austria Hungary breaks up into all these little parts. It's never an empire again. Germany still pretty much stays together. It loses some territory, but Austria Hungary, like it just falls apart. It's, it's not. And the Ottoman Empire falls apart. Why does it fall apart? Does it fall apart because it fought the war, or does it fall apart because it's like, um, like so, hungry um, falls apart because it was already weak to begin with, and then it had a war, and they lost their heir to the throne, so it was a bunch of bad things all at once. Okay. Um, but I don't think it could have lasted much longer anyway. Okay. Because you need a big, strong military to control an empire, and they just really didn't have that anymore. And what do you mean on the last one where it says little food from World War One blockade? Right. They had very little food in Germany because during World War One they had a blockade so that um, like all the ships were here so no one could bring food into Germany. They couldn't get extra food. They couldn't buy it from South America or America. Okay. So, any questions on that? Oh, whoa, 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 oh my gosh, oh my gosh, whoa. that's, that's actually kind of cool, that was really, really weird, <laughs> it's amazing, okay, so let's try this again, and not do whatever I just did, <laughs> this is so cool though, it was really I know. Cool. Yeah. Right. Yeah. okay, okay, so, um, Okay, so we put all these problems, right? Okay, so this is a map of all the food shortages in Europe. So if it, that? No. If it's orange, it's really, really bad. So this part of Russia, which uh, became Ukraine, was really bad. Belgium was really bad. And then down in, like, the Balkans was bad. Serbia. Um, Serbia. Yeah, Serbia. Um, yellow is pretty bad, and orange is really bad, too. So there's a huge problem with food shortages in Europe as well. If France won the war, then why why was it having food shortages? That's a good question. And Belgium too, right? Um, yeah. So that's because so much of their farmland was destroyed. And because most of the war took place in Belgium and France, there really weren't any trenches um, in Germany compar comparatively. The trenches were like here. So this is where there's a lot of farmland. So there was less food. Wait, what does the light orange mean? Oh, okay. Okay, so on the top right, there, Weimar Republic. Mm -hmm. And then the blue part, weak government in Germany after World War One. So after World War One, the Allies go in and they say, Kaiser Wilhelm, no more. You can no longer be in charge of Germany. So we're going to set up a grand, awesome democracy for you. And people are going to have the right to vote, but your government's going to be super weak because we don't really trust you. So they set up a super weak government. And unfortunately, there's so much violence. Like people are getting shot in the street all the time. There's rioting. Um, there's not enough food. So the government cannot control what's going on. Um, and this government is run by Paul von Hindenburg, who was a general for the Germans. And um, if we were going to the World War I Museum, I could show you his uniform that's there, but I can't show you that now. Um, so think of it as a really weak government. So like the government of, I don't know, Italy is pretty weak. Okay. But this is like um, way weak. Mm -hmm. So I'm still confused. Why did Germany think it was? Why did Germany think that like the um, Jews were like the whole problem, like their cause? That's a great question. I'm gonna come to that a little bit later. Hold your thought, okay? Uh huh. Was the Hindenburg like big blimpy thing named after him? It was good call. Yeah. So the big blimpy thing that blew up uh, was named after Mr. Hindenburg himself. Okay. So uh, we're gonna get some. Can you go uh, back? Okay. okay, so we're going to talk about Mussolini next week. Okay, so this part is in blue. You do need to write this down. So this is your top part. All right, so your top part is your left side. This is the most you have to write down because we just talked about this. Okay, so Germany has all these war reparation payments they have to make to Britain and England, right? So Germany says, just like Lily, let's print more money. 
Okay, then we can pay off our debt, which makes a lot of sense if you think about it that way. They owe billions of dollars of debt. So let's just print more money, send them the bills, and then we're done, right? Um, the problem is, though, this doesn't just cause inflation. It causes what's called hyperinflation, which is like the, the $5 billion problem, okay? So we talked about inflation, which is the price increases as the value of your money decreases. So we have about 3% inflation in the United States, which is okay. Hyperinflation though, is really, really bad. So essentially when you print your money, by the time it gets off the printing presses and onto the streets, it's already worthless. Why? Because the value has gone down already. So well, why can't they just print like bigger things? Like they do. Lot. And that's how they end up with $5 billion <laughs> notes. But then why doesn't it, I don't understand why it doesn't, like, why doesn't it, why is it not worth anything? Okay, so remember how we said that $1 is worth this, okay? Well, then we said $5 is worth this, and then $20 is worth this. Is this $1 worth anything then? No. No, okay, because. Oh, I get it now. Okay. Okay. So it, it's very complicated, Lily. I'm glad you're asking questions. Um, this is something a lot of adults don't understand. So what I want you to think about, the US government is giving $1,200 checks to a lot of people right now, okay? Is that really going to increase how much money people have? No. In the short term, it will. But if everybody's getting money, that's going to cause inflation, okay? So unless they take that money out later by taxing people, it's really not going to help people. It's going to help them temporarily, but not in the long term. Okay. So that's something to watch for in the next couple of weeks. All right. Do we still need time to write? Mm -hmm. Okay. Wait, just the blue things. Do we also have to write the black part? Just the blue. The blue okay. bulb. Oh! <laughs> what was that? What was that? Uh, that was my pencil cup. Oh, okay. It sounded like shattering glass. All right, I did that too. Yeah, I thought it was like <laughs> glass face. All right, try to finish up in the next 30 seconds. <laughs> So guys, when you think about inflation, my grandparents, they would go to the movie theater and it cost them like a dime, okay? Um, we used to be able to buy a car for a couple hundred dollars. Um, when we talked about the World's Fair, we said it was 50 cents to get in. So over time, money has definitely um, changed in value. Because it used to just be like a couple cents to get stuff, and now it's several dollars. Why? Why can't we just keep it the way it is? Like, <laughs> I don't understand. Why do they want more money? I don't even understand why we need money. Why can't we just like everyone would have the same amount if we had money? Things just didn't cost anything. Uh, like, they didn't cost anything. So you're, you're talking money. about communism. So you have to go back and read about the Russian Revolution for that. No, I just don't understand why it's like there could be no money in the world. That's what communism is. Really. Why do you want to go down that path? <laughs> All right, I'm moving on. Okay. What? Um, I have what? A go ahead. I have a don't wait. Hang on. Don't write this, guys. Don't write anything. Go ahead, out, Isabel. Um, Miss Ballard. Uh huh. So I was wondering why can't we just oh, kind of what Lily said, but not like why can't everybody just get what they need and not have. Why yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, not cost stuff. Why can't everybody just get what they need and not pay anything for it? That's okay. What I I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Let's go into that next time, okay? Okay. Okay. Remind me, we'll talk about that next time. But I want to make sure I'm fair to you guys, and we're done at 10:45, okay? Miss Fowler, it says huh? that it says that one ounce of gold was eight trillion seven hundred billion dollars. Yeah. So in Germany in 1919, so this is the end of the war, okay? It was 170 marks, which is like German dollars, for one ounce of gold, okay? 
So look at over time. This is when the inflation really jumps. It goes from 30 to 300,000 in less than a year. And then it goes to 269 million from 300,000. So that's a thousand times more in like nine months. Okay. So it's a thousand times more to buy something in nine months. So if you like, I need a thousand dollars to buy a can of beans. Oh my gosh. Okay. And then oh it goes God. billion, 24 billion, 84 billion, 1 trillion. 1.3 trillion, 8.7 trillion, 87 trillion dollars. Oh my gosh. What was originally $170? Do you want us to write this? No. <laughs> Miss Ballard. No, the blue part. The blue no, you don't need to write that. Don't write it. Okay. It says it's a billion dollars. And then some of it is like gold per uh gold price per kilo is $54,593.50. Yeah, it goes up a lot. So but there's a story of a guy who went to the cafe and he sat down and he bought a cup of coffee, right? So he sat there, he read his book, and then he went and bought his second cup of coffee. And let me check what the actual numbers were. Oh, I'll go back. So he spent, when the first cup of coffee was 5,000 marks. When the bill came, it was 14,000 marks. Okay, so instead of paying... 5,000 marks per each cup of coffee. The cup of coffee price went up 4,000 marks while he was sitting there. So it doubled. Are you oh supposed to write this? No, this is just for you to know. Okay. That's crazy. Wait, did he have any money to pay it? I hope so. But then he has to make more money to pay for it, right? For two so German, Germans had to pay war reparations in gold. So the value of money pretty much had no meaning. This has meaning. This doesn't have meaning, okay? But they're, the value of the money is, like, worthless. Okay, so this is just some pictures of Germany after, um, after World War One. This is the money. So these are kids playing with money like blocks. <laughs> this is a man with money in his cart to go buy something. Uh, this lady is buying a head of cabbage or potatoes with baskets of money. <laughs> one basket of money equals one cabbage. What? So they had like a lot of the paper money, but like yeah. the money, but it didn't wasn't worth anything. Yep. Uh, these people have a kite made out of money. Oh my gosh. Uh, this is they eventually had so much money they had to burn the old like useless stuff. We talked about how. If my twenty dollars was originally my one dollar, I don't need them, right? So they but would what, put it in these big why, bonfires. Why can't they just think? Because like right now, money is worth stuff. So why can't they just do it? Because that would have been a lot of money. They would have had enough to like. Right, work. but if if it's five trillion dollars equals one dollar bill, and these are one dollar bills, is that going to buy you anything? No. That's no. like pennies. It's but like less why couldn't why couldn't they keep that for like? Today, so if they still had all that money for today, oh, because that money, uh, they don't accept it anymore. Wait, Miss Ballard, was it like when we were learning our Africa countries, and there was that one guy with the big basket of money? Was it like that? Yes. Yeah, that's Zimbabwe. Oh, okay. Good question. Uh, these people are using money as wallpaper. <laughs> really? Okay, good so. How many Deutsche Marks, so that's like German dollars, would it take to make one US dollar uh, in 1920-something? $10 billion. No. Nope. One Deutsche Mark equals one dollar. One dollar. Oh, my gosh. One Deutsche Marks. Okay. So that is that much money. Okay. And this is kids looking at all of the money. Okay. Are we supposed to write that? Do you want to nope, say? You don't okay. write how much? How many dollar bills would it take to buy a house with that? That's a great question. And the value of the a house trillion. will probably change as you are buying it, right? So you could say, I make the offer for $17 trillion. And then by the end of the time you're done with your paperwork, it would have already increased to $20 trillion. So the, the value of the money is changing every minute. It's a huge mess. Okay? Yeah. So we're going to talk about next time about the Nazis and how the Nazis were able to come into power, a large part due to hyperinflation. 
Okay, so think of inflation as where the value of the money increases slowly. Hyperinflation is where it's out of whack completely. Um, okay, I have like two minutes. Any last minute questions? Uh, Miss Ballard. Uh huh. Can I talk to you after class about something? Yes. Okay. Any other questions, guys? Great. Right. Then I need everybody else to exit the premise. I'm going to talk to Azzy Rosales. Winston. Hi. How do we Bye. Hang up? Wait, how do we hang up? I'll see some of you later for Unbroken. Bye, Flynn. <laughs> hey, Miss Ballard. Uh -huh. so, you know, did you, so I took um, my Worthy Wise test last week, but uh -huh. I think I have, do I have to redo it? I think you reposted it. It's just I had two two uh, friends who need to retake because they messed up when oh. they took it. So okay. we should be good to go. Okay. Um, did you like the Unbroken book? Yeah, it was really good. Good. I'm glad you liked it. Um, I'll talk to you in a few minutes then, okay? Okay. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.